Hi folks, uh, Paul here from 48 Spokes. Glad you could join me. Um, I'm currently editing, uh, well not at the moment because I'm in the garage, but I'm currently editing uh, part three of the Rotiflex rear hub build. And that part is going to be focusing on how to determine your true end float of your bearings once they're fully assembled. You can work out the shim pack and think, great, that's it, I've got the shims worked out and I can bolt it all up and you won't have any end float. So it's a very important step to make sure that you do check your end float with a dial test indicator and I'll show you how, how I do all that in the video. But before I get into that, I just want to say a massive thank you to members of the Triumph Sports 6 Club and to Club Triumph Facebook groups. They've been absolutely brilliant. I couldn't have done this without their help. It's the first time I've done this, but when I started looking for information on how to build a Rotiflex rear hub, there was no video footage about. Um, also, uh, what I did find was some really useful stuff on a website by Ed Hollingsworth. Um, I think Ed's based in the States, and he was very helpful too. And uh, there's other people that have contributed as well, and, and I thank you all really because I couldn't have done it without without uh, without all of your help. Uh, but certainly the names that do spring to mind are Tony Lindsay Dean, um, Ed Hollingsworth, uh, Mark Smith, and Andy Cook. They're the they're the main people that I've been uh, liaising with over the build, and I really couldn't have done what I've done without their help. Um, it's quite an involved process. Uh, I've had a little bit of feedback from your previous video on, on the ways I could have done it differently, and I'm sure there are different ways that you can do it, but this is the way I've done it, and um, I'm happy uh, that I've done it the right way, and I'm happy with the end result. I've been an ex-aerospace engineer, I'm a bit anal with the way I do things, and I take my time, it probably take a bit longer than, than people, uh, than people think or people hope or people like but that's just the way I that's just the way I work so um, I hope you enjoyed the video it's going to probably be run to four parts but anyway this is part three so without further further ado let's let's get into it <laughs> bit of fun and games over the last few days with these so I'm just going to show you now what I do when I draw, do the dry build on the second one. Um, I've inserted the inner race uh, bearing in there uh, and the fit on this one is, is different to the fit on the other shaft. Um, it was a bit tight on the other shaft so it needed a bit more, um, it didn't slide freely up and down the shaft which gave me a bit of a problem which I'll explain later. But anyway, what I'm doing at the minute, I've got, got a little bit of end float in the in the hub, so I'm just tapping it down with a soft face mallet, nylon mallet, just tapping on the. That's it, it's just falling in there. What I previously worked out using my little uh, tool steel block that I made was that I needed. Uh, plus this the spacer it measured a five thou gap so what I did was because I could only buy five thou and three thou shims I bought uh, one five thou that one and one three thou that's what I've got so what I'm doing I'm going to put the the five and the three in so forcing the gap to be the other way around so this this should give me a two thou two to three thou end float, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for actually more end float than the book says to start with, and I'll explain why later. So I'm gonna put a little block over the top. That's measuring three thou over the back face of the bearing. What I'm effectively doing is this block face is replicating this face here, which is on the part of the shaft which uh, is removable along you've got the dust shield there and then you've got the next bit which allows the grease seal to run on and it's this face here that face that's being replicated by that and it's that face is going to so that face is hard up against the end of the stub shaft and that's what's going to give you the gap to give you the end float in there it's a little bit difficult to think about. Best to watch this and have a look at a sectional drawing, which I'll, I'll probably flash up on the um, on the screen. But 
have a look at your manual and get the sectional drawing and listen to this again and really think it through before you before you plough in. I'm just taking the three thousand shim out and I'm going to see what I've got now. Shouldn't have any gap at all now. So I think by putting this three thousand shim in, I'm going to get three thousand worth of end float. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to put these on to here and build it. So the first thing to go on is the distance please. What I use, because it's difficult to fish out, little magnet, it just fishes them straight out. So that's uh, there out. So what I've done, I've lowered the hub and all the bearings in situ onto the, onto the shaft, okay? Um, and you can see there's just a little bit of thread sticking through there, but what you mustn't do is just put the nut on and pull it through with that. Because you're trying to pull the splines on the shaft through the splines on the hub and it's the splines that lock the two halves of the shaft together and unlike on a, a gearbox where the splines slide quite nicely on the selectors these are quite tight fit so um, there's a little bit of effort needed to, to pull this down so the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to clean the spline before I have a go with it just to try and make it a little bit easier so the splines look nice and clean and dry but I'm just going to get a little copper a little copper brush and I'm just going to just and I'm just going to do the same the same in the hub as well uh, I'm just going to spray a little bit of WD-40 on it just to help it to slide down it's uh, not going to help much but it will it will be a little bit of a help A socket the socket fits just nicely into the cup there and I'm going to use that socket just to tap the hub shaft through onto this onto the uh, splines of the, sh of the half shaft what you're looking for you're looking for let's get more thread on that there you're looking for almost a full amount of thread so the full location of the nut on the end of the shaft because the last thing you want to do is strip the shaft the threads on the shaft and these, these are they're not the new not a lot much they're the old ones so you don't want to use you want to save your new ones for when you do the final build on the center to there nine inches so that's all it is so I'm deliberately only using nine inches for leaf bridge because last thing you want to do is to put a big bar on here and just strip things so do it sympathetically and just feel how things go so right before I start what I've got got loads of end float there loads of end float so as we draw the, the nut as we draw this outer hub onto the back part of this shaft that end float will become less and less and with the shims that's in here I should end up with 3,000 of end float I 
fingers, you can feel it going on. There's a fair bit of force, but not, not much, not to, not an undue amount. So stop every now and then, and just, there's still loads of unfold. Less. I'm just going to back it off and have a little look at how things are going. Just want to check the thread on the end of this shaft because these shafts are they're like um, they're like gold dust to find these are. What good it's going to do? I put a little bit more WD40 on it. Hopefully that will help a little bit. Right. What I'm going to do now? I'm going to put the torque wrench on. Last little bit. Using the Hellfords Advanced, but pretty good, not too expensive. And I'm going to set it to 90 foot pound. Actually, what I'll do, because because it's a it, it, it's in foot pounds and it's in newton meters, but the more accurate is the newton meter scale, because you've got a little you've got a little um, window there, 10 newton meter increments. And each one of these is 0.1 of a newton meter, so it's more accurate. So I'm just going to do a quick conversion from 90 foot pound to newton meters, and then I'm going to set it on the newton meter scale. So 90 foot pounds works out at 122 newton meters. So each one of these increments is one newton meter. You can see that set it 122. I'll just push the end in. Check the end float. Yep, yeah. so I'll finish talking this down now. So I should have, the bearing still spins nicely, but it doesn't feel like there's any end float, which is what I felt before. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to alter the setup of this in the vise, and I'm going to use a chisel, and I'm going to pry put it in between the, the back of the, the hub and the hub and the flange and just try and move it a little bit just to just to see if I can actually move um, enough to see if there was any end float. Whereas before it was so tight uh, on the bearings themselves that I couldn't feel any end float. But once I'd properly shimmed it by putting a little little wedge in and just see just a bit of leverage then I could detect some end float. So that's what I'm going to do next. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be sitting on that face there with that part which is all nicely powder coated. So uh, I'll try around and have it this way.
<coughs> so it's central in your voice and nip it up. So I'm using a dial indicator on a magnetic block. You can just detect about a thou of end float. So I think that should be good. The actual thing that you are looking for is actual end float. I'll just bring the camera around and show you in a minute. But the when you work out the shim pack size with the with this block over the back of the bearing, it really is just like a starting point and you can't really tell where you're gonna be exactly until you've finished doing the dry assembly and uh, the dry build and torch it up to 90 foot pounds. Once you've done that, that is how it will be on the car. And I know when you've, uh, when you've finished, when you put it on the car for real and finished doing the torque tightening, I think you tighten it to 115 foot pounds. So um, you do need to feel a little bit of end float because if anything, that's gonna be slightly less. So, I think that's uh, I think that's good to go now. So once you're set up with the uh, dial indicator uh, on your magnetic block on a piece of the shaft that's uh, that's nice and flat, so it's like that you can see the needle moving around very slightly. So just pick a point and don't touch it, and then you set reset this. Uh, just turn the dial to reset it, set it to zero, there you go, and now what I'm going to do, I'm going to just pry back slightly and you should see the clock move. See that? <laughs> so, I think that uh, should be good. That was part three of the Roadflex pub restoration. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it certainly gave me a few challenges along the way. Um, one thing to remember when you're building your particular hub up, don't aim for the lower limit. Um, you can see from what I did that I aimed for 3,000. I was trying to get 3,000 of an inch worth of end flow, and all I ended up with was 1,000. Um, the shims are only available in 3 and 5,000 um, sizes. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll put a link in the description below uh, as to where you can get that from. Um, but the thing to remember, because you're only looking for one to two thou, which is a very, very tight tolerance, um, you've really got to take your time and, and, and make sure you get it right. And don't just assume that once you've measured your shims, that's going to give you the end float because you can see it didn't work out like that in the video. Um, one thing you can do if you're looking to reduce your shim pack by one thousandth of an inch because you can only get three and five thousand shims. If you take three out, that's too much. What you can do is you can rem you can use a little distance piece here that goes in with your shims, and you can you can uh, use a micrometer and measure it and lap it then lap it down with a piece of piece of very fine emery cloth on a nice flat metal surface. Uh, keep measuring it. Use a bit of oil as you're lapping it and uh, you can get that down by a thousandth of an inch if, if you if you need to or even two thousandths it will just take a little bit of time but definitely worth worth worth, uh, worth doing because um, it'll get, get you out of a, a, a sticky corner anyway I uh, hope you found that interesting and informative um, if you have please give me a thumbs up it just helps me to support my uh, enthusiasm for making more videos and also please uh, click the subscribe button and uh, stick around because there's plenty more to come. Bye.